Hey everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, The Sharpening Guide. Before we jump into today's video, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who's subscribed and regularly leaves comments. Your support truly means a lot to me, and it has directly led to something really exciting. Cancept has just provided me with two knives. That honestly makes me really happy, because it shows how much people appreciate not only the quality of the channel, but also the strength of the community around it. That being said, I want to make one thing absolutely clear. My opinion remains completely independent. There were no conditions from Cancept and no limitations on what I can or cannot say. I'm free to share my honest thoughts and real experiences, and that has always been a non-negotiable for me. What I really appreciate about this opportunity is that it allows us to grow together. It also opens the door for possible giveaways in the future, which I would love to do as a way of giving something back. So once again, a huge thank you to Cancept for the support. That truly means a lot to me. Of course, I've linked the knives in the video description. I definitely recommend checking out the other knives Cancept has to offer. It's really worth it, especially if you're into unique and creative knife designs like I am. I was able to choose the knives myself, and my first pick was the Concept Prometheus. I chose it mainly because I instantly fell in love with the design, but also because of the steel. Like many Concept models, this one features CPM S35VN. It's a stainless powder metallurgy tool steel that performs really well as an EDC blade, and it's also a pleasure to sharpen. Later in the video, I'll also compare this steel to S30V, and we'll explore some fundamentals, like why certain steels can maintain bite even with a mirror polished edge, while others tend to lose their cutting aggression when polished too finely. If that sounds interesting to you, feel free to stick around until the end. Originally, Cancept wanted to send me the Apollo model, but I asked if we could swap that for something with Damascus steel instead. I was just curious to see how their Damascus actually performs when sharpening. Personally, I'm always a bit skeptical when it comes to Damascus. Many versions look amazing, but often don't cut very well. So I really wanted to show you whether Cancept's Damascus is just for show or if it's something you can actually sharpen and use seriously. But for today, we're starting with the Prometheus. I love the design, I love the knife, and I'll definitely be using it as an actual EDC. For this session, I'll be using the TS Prof Alpha Stones. I recently reflattened the entire set, so I'm still deciding whether to go all the way up to the 1000 grit stone or stop after the 360. Freshly resurfaced stones tend to leave a slightly rougher finish at first, but I'll explain that in more detail in just a moment. For now, I'll go ahead and get everything set up, bring you in a bit closer, and then we can finally get started with the sharpening. All right, folks, I've already marked the edge with a red marker, and now we're going to use the 360 grit stone to dial in our sharpening angle. I'd say we're probably somewhere between 21 and 22 degrees on this knife. It's always best to do this step with the stone you plan to finish with, or even with a slightly finer one, but never with anything too coarse. If you start too shallow with a rough stone, you'll end up creating deep scratches that you won't be able to remove later on. The angle looks pretty good so far. The material is being removed evenly across the edge. As always, we'll check both sides to make sure everything lines up and yeah, that looks solid to me. I'd say we're ready to start sharpening. Let me bring you in a little closer so you can see what's going on. We're going to start with the 120 grit stone to establish a clean new edge more quickly. Since I just freshly leveled the stone, it's still cutting very aggressively. So I'm working at a slightly slower pace to avoid putting too much stress on the steel or causing small micro chipping from the aggressive material removal. In general, the Alpha Stones are very gentle when it comes to material removal. But it's important to understand that when you freshly flatten or resurface a diamond stone, some of the diamond particles will protrude farther from the bonding matrix than others. These more exposed diamonds will wear down or break out of the bond during the first few sharpening passes. After a few sessions, the stone settles into a more stable state, where the diamond particles are more evenly exposed, and the stone begins to cut more consistently and less aggressively. This topic can get a bit complex when it comes to bonded diamond stones because the scratch pattern is directly influenced by how recently the stone was maintained and what type of bonding it uses. But I think we'll cover that topic in more detail in a separate video. Today, we've got something else on the agenda. I'm obviously not a metallurgist, a material scientist, or a steel expert in the academic sense. I have great respect for those who work in that field professionally. But I've spent the past few years diving deep into this subject, sharpening and testing a wide range of steels, comparing their performance, and building hands-on experience along the way, of course. 
I know there are people who could explain this topic in far more technical detail than I ever could. Still, what I want to do today is give you a clear and practical understanding of the subject. I want to avoid oversimplifying it, but also keep it accessible without slipping too far into technical jargon. One thing that's important to understand from the beginning is this. The topic is extremely complex. There are many exceptions, and new technologies continue to emerge. What I'm sharing here is a foundation, something to help you build a deeper understanding. For now, we're going to set aside one important factor, the type of material being cut and how it's being cut. Instead, we'll focus specifically on everyday carry knives. Not knives designed for a specialized purpose, but the kind of knives we use in normal day-to-day -day situations. Otherwise, the topic would simply become too broad. We're asking a simple but important question. Why can some steels develop a strong bite at a polished edge while others cannot? And which factors play a role? Even more important, how can we apply this knowledge and practice? Some steels can be taken to a mirror polish and still cut like a laser. Others, even when polished to perfection, feel slick or dull. And sometimes a blade might feel razor sharp at first, but lose that bite very quickly. So what's going on? As with so many things in sharpening, there isn't just one reason. It's a combination of several factors working together. One of the most important factors is the carbide structure. In every knife steel, there are carbides, which are extremely hard particles formed from elements like vanadium, niobium, molybdenum, chromium, and many others. These carbides vary in hardness and significantly influence the properties of the steel, depending on their concentration, composition, and how they are distributed within the microstructure. But it's not just about whether carbides are present. Their size, shape, and even spacing play a crucial role as does the steel matrix that surrounds them. If the carbides are too large or unevenly distributed, they can fracture during sharpening or weaken the edge. The apex might look perfect under a microscope, but in actual cutting performance, it lacks bite. On the other hand, if the carbides are fine, evenly distributed, and well supported by the surrounding matrix, the steel can form an extremely fine apex that delivers a surprisingly aggressive bite, even with a mirror finish. But carbides alone are not enough. The steel matrix, which holds the carbides in place, is just as critical. If the matrix is too soft, the apex may deform under pressure. If it is too brittle, the edge might chip. In either case, the edge loses its structure, and with it, the bite. This is where proper heat treatment becomes essential. A steel can have an ideal chemical composition and excellent carbide distribution on paper but it will never reach its full potential if it is not heat treated correctly. The matrix must be hardened and tempered properly to support the carbides and prevent them from shifting or tearing out during use. It is also during heat treatment that the final carbide types and their morphology are actually formed. This process determines how the carbides precipitate, how they grow, and how they bond with the matrix. If this step is done poorly, the steel might suffer from dulling, rolling, or microchipping all of which reduce the cutting performance. These variations are one of the main reasons why two knives made from the same steel can perform very differently in practice. Most production knives are not hardened to the upper performance limits of the steel. For cost efficiency and to reduce the risk of chipping or warranty issues, manufacturers tend to choose a safe, general purpose hardness. That's perfectly adequate for most users, but it also means the steel might not show its true potential. This is why two knives using the same steel can have completely different sharpening behavior, and why you often see heated debates in sharpening communities over what a particular steel can or cannot do. Let's now look at the more practical aspects. One major factor is the sharpening angle. The more lower the angle, the more pressure is concentrated on the apex. This increases slicing ability, but there is also less material behind the edge to support it, and not every steel can maintain that geometry. If the steel is too soft or lacks sufficient toughness, the edge can quickly deform or collapse. However, if the steel is suitable for fine geometry, a low sharpening angle is often necessary to achieve strong bite at a mirror polished finish. A higher angle can eliminate much of the bite, especially when taken to very high polish levels. This balance between sharpening angle, edge stability, and polish level needs to be carefully tuned. That covers the technical background, but there's something else you should never overlook. The technique you use to achieve a mirror finish plays a huge role as well. To give you a quick example, if you're using high quality sharpening stones and go all the way up to an 11,000 grit finish, that's one thing. But if you switch from, let's say, 
a 3,000 grit stone directly to a leather strop and continue working all the way up to 11,000 grit, the result is very different. In that case, there is a very high chance that you are overstropping. That means the very tip of the apex gets rounded off during stropping. And as a result, you lose your bite, even if the steel itself would have been capable of holding it. So in short, both the material and the technique play an important role. Now, does that mean steels that cannot hold bite at a mirror polished edge are bad? Of course not. We just need to understand that each steel is designed with certain strengths and weaknesses. This directly affects the range of finishes where the steel delivers its best performance. The goal should not be to force every edge to a mirror polish. Instead, we should try to match the steel with the right sharpening angle and finish to get the most out of it. Some steels reach peak performance between 400 and 3000 grit. At that level, there is still enough micro toothing to create bite while the apex is already refined enough to cut smoothly. If you go too fine, the edge can become slick and cutting performance drops, especially with steels that cannot maintain a stable microstructure at the apex. When we sharpen a steel that performs best around 600 grit, what we are really doing is helping the steel show its full potential by working with its natural characteristics. That coarser finish allows the grit-induced micro serrations to interact with the steel's carbides. Together, they create an ideal balance of sharpness and bite. You can think of it like a saw with teeth of different sizes. The steel determines how big or small those teeth can be in order to perform well. The right finish brings out the optimal pattern of these micro teeth, which maximizes cutting efficiency. A really interesting case is the comparison between S30V and S35VN. On paper, they're very similar. S30V contains slightly more vanadium and produces more vanadium carbides. S35VN adds around 0.5% niobium, but 1% less vanadium. In theory, that should make for a finer carbide structure, which would support a more stable mirror polished edge. But in practice, S30V often holds bite better than S35VN when polished. Why that happens isn't completely clear, and I don't want to speculate, but it's a great example of how small changes in composition can have a big effect, and how theory and practice don't always align there's another example from a recent sharpening session. I was working on a knife in S90V. Normally, I get great results at around 600 grit with that steel. But this knife felt off, and the edge wasn't as aggressive as I expected. So I took it up to around 1200 grit, and suddenly the sharpness was better. That just shows how much variation can exist between knives, even in the same steel. Or take my video where I sharpened Rex 121 and brought it to a perfect mirror finish. The idea was to push the limits of the TS Prof Alpha Stones, but also to see how this steel responds to a high polish edge and whether it can still develop any bite. That video is already a bit older. And looking back, I don't think I communicated the core idea very clearly. I probably assumed too much background knowledge from the viewer. And as a result, the actual purpose of the test didn't come through as well as it should have. But that's part of the process. I'm constantly learning how to make better videos and how to communicate information more clearly and completely. And just to be clear, what we are talking about here is real-world performance. How the edge behaves during actual use. We are not chasing some theoretical maximum sharpness as a momentary result. What really matters is how long the edge holds up, how it cuts in practice, and how well the steel supports that level of performance. And at the end of the day, this isn't about perfection. If you like the look of a mirror edge and enjoy the sharpening process, then go for it, even if the steel isn't the perfect candidate. I have knives in my collection that I rarely use, but I polish them anyway, simply because they make me happy to look at. That's what this hobby is all about. Don't overthink it. If you're not sure where to start, check out some videos, get a rough idea, and then start experimenting. Try different finishes and see what works best for your knife. That kind of experimentation, and sometimes making mistakes like over polishing a steel, is actually one of the most important parts of the learning process. You have to feel the difference in sharpness or bite for yourself. Otherwise, you'll never truly understand whether you've reached the steel's full potential with the finish you've chosen. I hope this helps shed some light on why polished edges sometimes bite, and sometimes just don't. It's not always the steel, and it's definitely not always your fault. In many cases, it simply comes down to finding the right combination of geometry, finish, steel, and how you actually use the knife. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been. And if you're enjoying the video so far, feel free to leave a like. It really helps. That was quite a lot of information, so 
We won't go into detail about the deburring process for this knife right now. But to give you a quick overview, I start with edge trailing strokes to flip the burr back and forth, gradually weakening it and letting it fall off the apex on its own. When I feel like there's no more progress, I switch to a few edge leading strokes to reduce the remaining burr even further. Since we're already talking about deburring, I should mention that I've been working on a custom setup and technique that could help make the deburring process faster and easier. I'm still in the middle of testing, and I'm waiting for a few more components to arrive before I can finalize it. But if everything goes as planned, I'm really hopeful it will turn out the way I imagined. So definitely stay tuned for that. Right now, I don't have any diamond emulsions coarser than 6 micron. And honestly, I'm not very impressed with the one I do have. So for now, I'm just doing a few final burr reduction passes using my 2 slash 1 micron stone. This helps to reduce the remaining burr even further. That said, I've already ordered a full set of diamond emulsions from 15 all the way down to 6 micron. And I'm especially curious to see how the 15 micron performs. I've also got several new sharpening stones and accessories on the way, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's definitely going to be worth it. With that, I'm done with the deburring process. I'll go ahead and unclamp the knife so we can take a closer look at the final result and test the sharpness. I'd say the result already looks very promising, and I'm definitely satisfied so far. Some of you might have noticed that I haven't included a best test in my recent videos. There's a reason for that. Before I bring it back, I want to make a dedicated video explaining a few things in more depth. So just hang in there. That one's coming soon. For now, let's see how well the edge performs on a paper towel. Keep in mind, we're working with a relatively high sharpening angle, which definitely affects how the edge behaves in a test like this. But let's see what it can do. I'd say this knife turned out properly sharp, and it's definitely ready to go into rotation as one of my EDCs. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like. And thanks again for all your support, and for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot. Once again, a big thank you to Cancept for sending me the knife. I'll definitely be testing the Damascus model from them as well. Sometimes my video schedule shifts a little when new steels, knives, or stones arrive that I want to feature right away. So I hope you understand if things occasionally move around a bit. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.